Hi there and welcome into the Fox Sports Studios for the Lone Star Conference Showcase. I'm Dana Larson, joined by the Commissioner of the LSC, Stan Wagnon. Stan, always good to see you. And we've got a lot to get to as we recap the seasons for all of the fall sports, including a big weekend for LSC football with West Texas A&M upsetting top-ranked Colorado State Pueblo in the NCAA Division II quarterfinals. And we will look back at the second annual football festival at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, plus preview the women's and men's basketball season. Stan, it's been a good couple of months already, hasn't yeah, it? We've had a great fall in the Lone Star Conference. You know, All-Americans and various sports. We've got uh, football and volleyball teams playing deep into December, so it's a good time to be in the Lone Star Conference. And we are going to go sport by sport. We start with volleyball and begin with a look at the final regular season standings. Take us through it, Stan. Yeah, you know, our league has really made a lot of strides in uh, the sport of volleyball. Each year we continue to get better and better, and I really think this year we've got two of the better teams that we've ever had in the conference history with Angelo State and West Texas A&M. You know, the regular season belonged to Angelo State. The Bells, you can see there, went 18-2 and to win the conference championship for the first time since 1992. And uh, West Texas, our runner-up, had their sixth 30-win campaign in seven years. But uh, really, it's not just about those two programs this year. We had uh, uh, five programs win 20 matches, so I think it really uh, speaks to the strength of our conference. Highly competitive, as you just showed us there. Angelo State, though, in West Texas saw a lot of each other this season, didn't they? And they would duke it out in the tournament finals as well. Yeah, Angelo State, uh, as the regular season champion, got to host the conference tournament. And uh, they uh, would, would finish with that matchup against West Texas A&M in the finals, but not before rallying past Texas Womans in a, a semifinal match that probably was the highlight of the weekend, a five-game victory for Angelo State, set up that showdown with uh, Nemesis and number two seed uh, West Texas A&M. The Rambells appeared to be on their way to the tournament title. They were up two sets to one and leading 16 to eight in that fourth set. But the Lady Buffs unleashed a comeback for the ages, scoring nine in the final 10 points to rally for a 25-22 win, and then took the fifth set 15 to 12 to claim their 14th overall and seventh straight Lone Star Conference tournament title. Our WT senior Aaron Doherty was named the tournament's most valuable player. She had 17 kills in the finals and uh, really a great weekend of volleyball for the Lone Star Conference. And what a match for her and what a season for her. Uh, more on Aaron Doherty coming up here. But first, here's some post-match reaction. I don't know, I just, I'm happy for the players. I'm just truly happy for the players. That's, these seniors, I think that they, I think the seniors, I don't make some of it. These seniors, I've always had people tell them that someone else has done the dirty work for them to be in it, you know? Um, you know, Muscle Clark, uh, uh, Lauren, Pinson. And um, these girls now, like, it's 100% them. And in that kind of fashion, I mean, you, you can't take that away from them. We came back, we knew that no matter what, we wanted to take some kind of trophy home, take it back to WT. So that was just such a great feeling to have. And yeah, like you said, this is seven in a row. It's my fourth. Um, I've gotten to be like really on the court for three of them. And so it's just, it's, so, it's such a great feeling to end my season. Regular season champion Angelo State had four players take home hardware this season. The Rambells Alex Woolsey earned Setter of the Year honors. Shelby Wilt was tabbed Libero of the Year. Shelby Good named Newcomer of the Year. And Chuck Waddington was Coach of the Year. AM Commerce's Rachel Robertson earned Offensive Player of the Year recognition, while Tarleton's Nikki McNorton earned Defensive Player of the Year honors. Abilene Christian Sarah Siemens was named Freshman of the Year. Interesting, no individual awards though for tournament champion West Texas A&M, and yet they are the only team stand still playing after yet another rematch with Angelo State. Yeah, that's right. We had an exciting uh, regional up in Colorado. The uh, uh, Angelo State and West Texas were the only two teams to represent us, but they went up there and uh, competed very favorably for the conference, uh, had their way in the quarterfinals and semifinals, and set up that showdown in the regional championship. Uh, West Texas A&M got off to a quick start, and it was just a little bit too much for Angelo State to overcome as the Lady Buffs won 3-1 to one in the regional championship match to register their 12th NCAA regional title and move on to the Elite Eight. 
So after winning the South Central Regional Championship, they advanced to the national quarterfinals, as you said, where they took on BYU Hawaii. And for all the latest scores and updates, check out LoneStarConference.org. And congrats to the Lady Buffs for another very successful season. Coming up next here on the Lone Star Conference Showcase, we recap the seasons for cross country and soccer. And a little bit later, we will, of course, talk football. That is coming up here in just a moment. Welcome back to the Lone Star Conference Showcase. This past October, the LSC Cross Country Championships were held in Lawton, Oklahoma. Midwestern states women and eastern New Mexico's men were looking to defend their 2011 titles. That's right. It worked out quite, uh, pretty well for eastern New Mexico as they won their second straight conference crown after uh, ending a string of 20 straight championships for Abilene Christian. And I'd be remiss if I didn't stop and mention Abilene Christian here. You know, they've been a great member for us, and uh, this is their last season. But specifically in cross country, uh, they have won 25 of the 31 meets that they've competed in in our conference. This was the last one for them, and so, uh, you know, certainly an end of a good era for them. Uh, for Eastern New Mexico, this year belonged to the Greyhounds. They had three top 10 finishers and finished with 37 total points. Uh, West Texas A&M was our runner-up this year with 75 points, and Charlton came in third with 81 points. Individually, uh, Eastern's Isaiah Samoy took home medalist honors for the second straight year. And Caspers Briska was fourth, and Kevin Rowe was eighth, a couple of his teammates there. Eastern went on to uh, finish fifth at regionals and 18th at nationals, with Samoy placing second and eighth at those meets, respectively. And the senior from Kenya, as you see here, was also selected as the LSC Men's Cross Country Runner of the Year, a two-time All-LSC and All-Region honoree, and he became the Hounds' first All-American during the NCAA era. Samoy earned All-American status uh, with an Eastern New Mexico record time of 29-25-8. The finish improving on a 66th play fit place finish from last year's championships. And how about this? One of the most decorated Greyhound runners in recent history, a two-time Lone Star Conference champion and the only Eastern New Mexico runner to win the Lone Star Conference meet. So now to the women, Stan. Stan, Midwestern State was looking for its fifth straight title, but the Lady Buffs had other ideas. Yeah, that's right. You know, West Texas A&M has had an incredible fall, and it really started with our women's cross-country meet. Uh, uh, WT's Lady Buffs claimed their first ever conference championship in this sport and uh, put an end to MSU's four-year string of championships. And so uh, Lady Buffs in this meet had the top three finishers, and all five of their runners finished in the top 15. They scored 30 points total to walk away with the trophy. MSU was our runner-up with 64 points, while Incarnate Word was third with 71 points. And individually, uh, WT's Brenda Sendit uh, took home medalist honors, while her teammates uh, Maria Gorner and Amber Moore were just seconds behind in second and third place. WT went on to finish fifth at regionals and 11th at nationals, with Sendit placing seventh and 23rd at both of those meets. Brenda Sindit, as you see there, uh, what a year she's having. Set a new school record at the national meet and earned All-American honors. And she has also been named the Lone Star Conference Cross Country Runner of the Year. We move on to the pitch. We talk soccer now on the men's side. Incarnate Word went on quite a run this season with a school record tying 11 straight wins. That momentum carried them to the LSC title and beyond. Yeah, absolutely. It was a strong finish for Incarnate Word this year, but really overall, it's been a strong year for the league. We had uh, all four teams finish with winning records, uh, combined to win 70% of their contest this year, 36 wins, five ties, and only seven losses in 48 non-conference games for our men's, uh, men's soccer teams this year. Incarnate Word, as you mentioned, won its first ever Lone Star Conference title in its last season of competition with our league. The Cardinals were unbeaten in league play. They cruised to the title with a 5-0-1 mark and uh, went on to have great success in the Division II National Tournament. They won a regional title and advanced all the way to the national quarterfinals before dropping a tough 1-0 decision to NCAA newcomer Simon Frazier. Let's look at the awards now for the regular season in men's soccer. Incarnate Words, Vincent Bailey tabbed co-offensive player of the year. James Nero named defensive player of the year. Robin Nichols earned a share of newcomer of the year honors. And Vince Martinez collected the coach 
of the Year Award. Midwestern State's Javon Toledo claimed Freshman of the Year and Len Smith, Co-Newcomer of the Year as well. West Texas A&M's Dom Furness earned Co-Offensive Player of the Year to lead a group of seven Buffaloes recognized. On the women's side, very balanced league this year, and certainly that was reflected both in the league standings and in the conference tournament results. West Texas finished 10-4 and four and took home the regular season crown, edging out Incarnate Word. The Cardinals were 9-5-0 and oh on the year. The two stand would meet for a third time in the finals of the tournament. The Cardinals had beaten the Lady Buffs in the previous two matches in the regular season. Yeah, that's right, Dan. We had a really uh, a balanced year, uh, and, and in the end, West Texas A&M came out on top in both uh, the regular season and the conference tournament. That championship game that you mentioned was a 3-2 double overtime victory for the Lady Buffs, and probably the, the irony of the whole deal is they lost to them both times in the regular season. They never led the entire championship match until that 108th minute. Uh, when they scored the game-winning goal to win the conference tournament. It's the third time in the past six years that WT's won the LSC in both the regular season and the tournament. And uh, Leslie Briggs for the Lady Buffs was named the tournament MVP. She had three goals and one assist in two tournament games, including that game winner uh, as time was winding down against Incarnate Word. West Texas went on was on our, our lone representative in the NCAA tournament, and they bowed out to Metro State to bring to end the season. As we show you the awards, you mentioned Leslie Briggs. She wasn't just the tourney MVP. The Lady Buffs forward earned Offensive Player of the Year honors as well. West Texas A&M coach Chad Webb, Coach of the Year. The Cardinals took home two special awards with Defensive Player of the Year Sarah Parker and Newcomer of the Year Katie Miller. ASU's Danielle Edwards was tabbed Goalkeeper of the Year, while MSU's Ashley Cottrell was named Freshman of the Year. Coming up next, we head to the Gridiron. We take a look back at the football festival at Cowboys Stadium. We will also recap an exciting regular season, tell you what players took home some hardware, and show you highlights of the Kansas Bowl. It's next on the Lone Star Conference Showcase. Welcome back to Lone Star Conference Showcase. Dana Larson and the Commissioner Stan Wagner here with you. We have talked soccer, volleyball, and cross country. Last but certainly not least, it's football. We will discuss the overall season in just a moment, but first let's look specifically, Stan, at one special weekend in September at Cowboy Stadium. The second annual Lone Star Football Festival was even bigger and better this year. Yeah, no question. We are so excited about our partnership with Cowboy Stadium and the opportunity to bring all of our football teams in for the Lone Star Football Festival. This year was another success. We had more than 19,000 people through the gates on Saturday, ended with a three-day total attendance of uh, 33,180. 80 fans. Uh, this year's event included a national television uh, coverage of Midwestern's uh, big win on the first night. Uh, Eastern New Mexico provided a thrilling uh, victory uh, in the lineup. Abilene Christian held off Tarleton State in an exciting 34-31 contest that, that really did have a great atmosphere. And then uh, I think WT got everybody's attention and kind of set the stage for a big year uh, with a big win to end off our event. Yes, you talked about it. Both West Texas A&M and Midwestern State put on quite a show at the football festival. That was clearly a sign of things to come. For the first time since 2007, the Buffs can call themselves Lone Star Conference champs. They are co-champs along with Midwestern State, who also finished 7-1 and one in league play. Yeah, Dana, the, uh, the regular season really did shape up to be a two-team affair. You know, those two teams met on November 3rd, and Midwestern uh, squeaked out an improbable 52-48 to 48 victory. They scored a pair of touchdowns in the final two minutes of the game to get that victory and uh, we had three teams go on into postseason play both Midwestern and West Texas uh, went into the NCAA playoffs and then Texas A&M Kingsville was selected to represent us uh, in the Kansas Bowl. And we'll talk about the Kansas Bowl here in just a second, but first let's wrap up the regular season with the awards. Dustin Vaughn takes home the J.W. Rollins Award, which is given to the Offensive Player of the Year. The junior quarterback from West Texas is thrown for over 4,500 yards and 44 touchdowns this season for the Buffs. Vaughn, a native of Corpus Christi and Cal Allen High School alum, because the third finalist in school history for the Harlan Hill Trophy, given to the most valuable player in NCAA 
Division II. Stan, uh, that's a, it's been quite a career already. He's got another year to go. Yeah, Dustin Vaughn's a, just a great example of a student athlete. Uh, I've had a chance to get to know him a little bit because uh, he works with our student athlete advisory committee, but just great character, uh, great leadership and uh, obviously getting it done on the field. He's got a chance to go down as one of the most decorated players ever. As you mentioned, he's just a junior, got another year back of leading the Buffaloes and looking for big things out of Dustin. And along with Dustin, you see there, offensive back of the year, Kiri Robinson, receiver of the year, Torrance Allen, Robert Armstrong, Taylor Gabriel, offensive lineman of the year for Midwestern State, Ken Van Huel. Uh, Ethan Westbrooks wins the J.B. Sykes Award, which is given to the Lone Star Conference Defensive Player of the Year in just his first season in a Buffalo uniform. Westbrooks headlines a defense that ranks first in the nation in sacks. A native of San Leandro, California, he had a monster season leading the team in the conference with a school record 19 and a half sacks. Westbrooks also had a team high 26 tackles for a loss. Uh, his coach takes home co-coach of the year, Don Carthel, defensive back of the year, LB Suggs. Tarleton State had defensive lineman of the year, Rufus Johnson, Angelo State, freshman of the year, defensive lineman, Clayton Calicut. And Texas A&M Commerce's Danny Mason was named linebacker of the year as the Lions' only first team player. Back to the Kansas Bowl now. The annual bowl game between teams for the Lone Star Conference and the Mid-America Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Stan, as you mentioned, Kingsville represented the LSC and the Havilinas faced Emporia State in Topeka, Kansas. It turned out to be a tough day, though, for the Havilinas. Well, it was. You know, they uh, had a pretty good performance, but it ended up being a frustrating 48 to uh, 38, 45 to 38 loss to Emporia State. Uh, Havilinas amassed 559 yards of total offense nearly 250 uh, more than Emporia had. And uh, A&M Kingsville also had a 27-13 advantage in first downs, but uh, in the end, the Havilinas committed five costly turnovers that just proved to be too much to overcome. So uh, Jeremy Aguilar led the Havilina defense uh, in his final game. He had nine tackles, a sack, and a Kansas Bowl record four and a half tackles for loss. So bittersweet end of the season for the Havilinas. When we come back, we're not done with football yet as one Lone Star school is marching on in the playoffs. We'll show you those highlights next. And look ahead to the season on the hardwood when the Lone Star Conference Showcase rolls on. Welcome back to the Lone Star Conference Showcase. Very successful season for LSC football. Two teams making the national playoffs. Midwestern State season ended with a first round loss at Indianapolis, a 31-14 final. But West Texas A&M stand is moving on. Yeah, that's right. You know, West Texas A&M really has kind of become road warriors during the playoffs here. They've won consecutive road games against the number three, number two, and number one seeds in the region to claim the Super Region 4 championship. And they're going to play in the national semifinals this weekend. WT won 38-30 up in Nebraska against Shadron State, 33-28 over uh, previously undefeated Ashland up in Ohio, and then 34-13 at previously unbeaten and number one ranked CSU Pueblo up in Colorado. The Buffs now will face Winston-Salem State on Saturday in North Carolina. And uh, like I said, this, this road game is not going to be anything new for them. They've played nine road games. I'm sorry, they've won nine straight road games this year, won each of the last four weekends. If they happen to win this weekend, uh, that national championship game will be their 12th game away from home this season. That is something else. And what an exciting time stand for the conference with one of the deepest runs in some time in football. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, we have not been this far since 2003 when A&M Kingsville reached the semifinals. We haven't been to the national championship game and since uh, 1994. Again, A&M Kingsville played North Alabama that year. And then uh, we haven't won the national championship since 1982 uh, when Southwest Texas brought home the gold trophy for the Lone Star. Well, we move on now to hardwood, and that, of course, means basketball. The women's and men's basketball seasons have tipped off. Who are some of the team stand we should be watching out for? And let's start with the women's side. Yeah, on the women's side, I think the uh, overwhelming favorite here is going to be Tarleton State. They went 23-9 and last year, winning 17 of their 20 conference games. 
uh, to win the first ever Lone Star Conference title in school history. Uh, Kiara Wright and Peyton Adamson are two of the key returnees for the Texans. They've played big roles in their recent success, and uh, I think you, you know West Texas was picked second, so you got to uh, always look at them. But the other team maybe to watch is Midwestern State. They're picked third and already off to a five and one start. So I think uh, those are the ones I'd take a look at. For the men, a couple programs have been really strong here lately and continue to reload. Yeah, you know, our preseason poll is very close between Midwestern State and Tarleton State, which is what you'd expect, you know, given the results of those two programs here in recent years. Uh, playoff participants, uh, perennial powers. Uh, West Texas A&M is probably another team you ought to keep your eye on. They've got preseason player of the year Donald Sims and veteran coach Rick Cooper always has them in the mix. They're off to a quick six and one start. They did drop their LSC opener, which I think uh, probably is, shows the strength of our league this year. I really look for it to be a great year. As we head into December, uh, our teams have combined to win 34 of their 50 non-conference games. So certainly all things are pointing to another strong year for the LSC in men's basketball. And all these teams are eyeing a trip to Allen, Texas in March. The conference championships will once again return to North Texas. What makes Allen such a perfect place for this tournament? Well, we're excited to be at, uh, returning to the Allen Event Center. We think it's a phenomenal setting for a college basketball tournament. All of our student athletes and coaches uh, think it's a great venue for competition. Our fans enjoy the inside of the arena. But uh, probably what's even better is once you get outside the arena, there's plenty of entertainment options. You've got restaurants and shops all in a close proximity. So we think it's a great place. It's going to be a great week for Lone Star Conference basketball. And same great atmosphere, but slightly different format. Tell us more about the changes to the tournament this year. Yeah, Dana, it is a new format. Uh, we're going to have every session will include one women's game and one men's game. So uh, it's going to be a little bit different for us. We'll start on Wednesday. And uh, in order to give our number one and two seeds uh, a day off, maybe a little bit of an advantage in the bracketing, we're going to start with our one versus eight and our two versus seven games on Wednesday for both genders. They'll then take Thursday off as the three, six games and the four, five games are played Thursday for both genders. And then Friday, we're going to see semifinal contest played throughout the day and then finally wrap things up on Saturday with our women's and men's championship games played in a single session on Saturday night. We're going to have uh, eight out of our 11 women's teams, eight out of our me uh, 10 men's teams qualify, so pretty much every, everybody can go ahead and make plans now to attend. And you should, and here is how you can do so. Once again, Allen Event Center is the site. The time, March 6th through the 9th, and tickets will be available through Ticketmaster, the Allen Event Center, and at each school. So be sure to head on out there. It is a terrific event, and you will want to see lots of it. Stan, thanks so much for being with us once again. We have enjoyed wrapping it up. We've talked an awful lot about West Texas A&M in this show. What a fall they had. Yeah, they really had a great fall. You know, out of the six fall sports that they compete in, they took home Lone Star Conference hardware in four of them. Their football team has made it into the national semifinals, volleyball into the national quarterfinals, and their women's cross country team, uh, 11th place showing at the national meet, the best in school history. So congratulations to the Buffs and Lady Buffs. Uh, what a wonderful year. And that will do it for this edition of the Lone Star Conference Showcase. We will see you again in February as we preview the basketball tournament and all of the spring sports. And don't forget, you can see more video of all the fall championships at LoneStarConference.org. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.